Hello and welcome to Movies, Films, and Flicks. I am Mark Hoffmeyer and joining me is someone who is recording this episode from inside their comfy Vermont manor. It's Lisa Leahy. <laughs> hey Mark, how's it going? That, that was a mouthful. I apologize everyone. <laughs> I'm not going to redo it. We all know that you're in your manor in Vermont. I am. Yep. I'm very comfy in my manor with my uh, divider fireplace. <laughs> And I'm, I'm hanging out. I make my grilled cheese with Gruyere cheese because it's just so much meltier. Hey, I don't want to wreck your grilled grilled cheese speech here, but don't don't be messing with my grilled cheese, man. Are you gonna try that grilled cheese sandwich? To. No, I haven't. No. Oh. I actually can't remember the last time I had a grilled cheese sandwich. They're better. Like, I feel like they're better th- thinking about than eating. Does that mean like you're like, oh man, look at that grilled cheese sandwich, and then you eat it, and you're like. I don't know what this is doing for me. Like, I don't know if you're isn't... making them properly then. What? Well, no, I'm just, even if I get a delicious one, I, I'm never, I never finish it or I really enjoy it, but I love oh. the idea of it. I'm yeah, no, I, I always enjoy Well, because I also like, it's never just cheese. Like I put a slice of tomato and ham in my cheese too. Oh, so you're making a ham, cheese and tomato, tomato sandwich. sandwich. You're yeah. making a HTC. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a Ham, THC or cheese. is that something different? Yeah. Yeah, and with, with THC. <laughs> you can make a lot of money. That's why I enjoy it so much. That's going to be your side hustle <laughs> coming up here soon. Hey, you know. I like it. Girls got to do what a girl's got to do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. We, we've I'm talked so about excited. some wonderful films, but now yes. we're talking about 2020's The Hunt. Yes. And, and listen, I really don't want to go back to 2020. <laughs> It's funny because this um, is the first movie I saw in the pandemic. Like, this and The Invisible Man are officially, like, my pandemic memories. Because Invisible Man is the last movie I saw in the theater before we shut down. And then this was the first movie I watched um, when they were doing, like, that new release at home thing. I absolutely coughed up the 20 bucks to watch this at home, and I was happy to do it. It's uh, Listen, Betty Gilpin yes. as Crystal May Creasy is... <sighs> I can't think of a performance I've enjoyed more since th- this decade. Let's just say this. I can't since 2010, since 2000. Yeah. It is, you know what I love about her is the on set, Craig Zobel, the director, they would do a Linda Hamilton take, but then they would do a <laughs> Betty Gilpin take. And I they were like, it. yeah, we use 90% Betty Gilpin takes. Yeah. So when that scene in the car, when she just sort of leans down in it and going, <laughs> and then kicks so. the dude in the face. <laughs> Kicks making Blair just yep. right in the face. But the noises she makes, and, you know, I'm kind of, hmm. <laughs> I love it. And here, I think it's so good. And here like, I she's that be... toddler who's bored and, like, needs to entertain herself for a couple of seconds. She's just like, I've heard enough. <laughs> <laughs> and when she shows up to the gas station and, like, wipes out those two people, and she's like, I, you know, you effed up, bitch. Like, just... <laughs> It's it's like a a feral performance, but it's very controlled. And she does the classic what leaf piece of you know uh, pin on water. She knows her directions. She just takes off, doesn't care. Like and she's sassy too. Uh, do you believe me? Do you believe that you have fifty friends, Gary? Like she <laughs> and like the physicality of the role too. She said she worked out a lot, but she didn't want to get super lean. She just wanted to get big and strong. And so watching Glow's Betty Gilpin battle a million dollar babies, Hillary Swank, in a yes. seven minute free for all. Yes. Most it's a lot of kitchen fighting. Is it's good stuff though. That's the center house. Like that's the, the heart of the house. Yeah. You know, like that's where all the good stuff happens. And she like that brawl between them and it bums me out that there was so much negativity because this was supposed to come out in twenty nineteen. And then people were like, oh, it's about a bunch of liberal elites killing people, deplorables, and ah, I haven't seen it, but I hate it. And yeah. then it gets delayed to 2020, and then the pandemic happens, and there's so much bad – like, people hated this movie before they saw it. And you know what? This is not even a super sharp, mean satire. It's, no. It's – the characters are so broad. Uh, and, and even the director had something to say about that. I want to see what you think about it. He said that – um. Like, the characters play with blunt caricatures to make its point. He's like, I felt that it was inherent in the premise, he said, to make a movie about people misunderstanding what the other side believes and assuming the worst of people. Just doesn't work in a wildly humanistic Darden Brothers movie. 
You have to use more satirical story language to make that work. You have to have these archetypes. So what do you, like, as a writer, you're a writer and you teach writing. Like, what do you feel about that as far as storytelling? Well, I think if you're if you're going to be satirical, you have to go to the outer edges of your boundaries like you have to. You can't be subtle in a good satire because then you're not dealing with satire anymore. You know, it just it, it sounds stupid, like I'm using the word to define itself, essentially, and I'm talking in a circle. But this idea that it, it, with this kind of political thing, you have to be over the top and silly about it. You know, you have to drop every last little possible clever uh, reference that you can. And it, I mean, if if your satire pisses some people off, it means you've done a good job. <laughs> I yeah. mean, like, if nobody's angry at your satire, it means you didn't do it properly. And, and look at Dr. Strangelove. No one's subtle. <laughs> like, it's a subtle no. – some, but, you know, like, can you turn the phone down, Dimitri? Like, it's it's insane. <laughs> and then being there, right, where yep. just a complete idiot, Chancey Gar Chance the Gardener, goes out in the real world for one day and then eventually works his way up to being a world power, walking on water. It's so not subtle. No. Like you, you need to almost be a, a sledgehammer in this regard. Right. And also, too, though, like if you're right. If this was about a bunch of humanistic, smart people, like, talking, like, this isn't – that's not the movie. Yeah, like, nobody would care. No, that's not the movie at all. And yeah. did, I have a question. You don't watch trailers, but did you have preconceived notions going into this movie? I have absolutely no idea. I don't think so. I just think what I was drawn to, and this may frighten people – was this idea of, like, people hunting people. Like, The Most Dangerous yeah. Game is a fantastic short story. I'm a big fan of the Purge films. Um, I just think it's an incredibly unnerving premise. I fully believe that there are people in this country and in other countries that would jump on board if given the chance to do such a thing. So I'm kind of fascinated by that dark psychology, that dark side of humankind, that people would do this. So that would have been what drew me to this first and foremost, not the political angle to it. You know, I forgot you like villains. Oh, you like very blow, much. You like blood explosions. I like the dark. Burn. Yes. And oh, I love my bright burn. Did you like the hard target? Did you notice the hard target? Target? Uh, what is it like homage or callback? Did you notice that? I didn't notice that. So Lance Hendrick gets uh, a grenade in his pants in hard oh, target. Okay. And then in so this see, one, I'm not as familiar with hard target as I should be. And then Ethan Supley puts a grenade in yes. the other guy's pants and blows him up. So when I saw yes. that, I'm like, hard target. And it took so long to go off. Mm -hmm. It was like, damn, they're extending this. Like, you wonder if it's another dud, like the last one when they when she forgot to oh, pull the pin. Did you take the pin out? No. <laughs> and the other one comes to roll with it. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. And then there's also these monologues. In Surviving the Game, Gary Busey has a beautiful oh, I monologue. I love that movie. I haven't yeah. seen that movie in far too long. My parents uh, took my brother and me to Washington, D.C. And for whatever reason, when we were in the hotel that night, rainy day or something, my brother and I remember lying across the bed in the hotel room watching that movie. And it's just for some reason I have wonderful memories of it, but I haven't seen it in years. Hotel movies are always memorable. That's why I love Major League Two so much. Oh, I saw that in a double feature with with honors. Ooh, Brendan Fraser and all. How's Fra that Fraser, for a Fraser. Fraser, yes. Yeah, and I love in Major League Two. There's that fake movie with Omar Epps and Jesse Ventura. Was <laughs> yes. it Black Hammer, White Lightning? And <laughs> oh my God! And Tom Berenger's just sitting there watching it, going, <laughs> "What?" He makes the best facial expressions oh, in that movie. <laughs> and then Omar Epps is like, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." And then the guy oh who says, God. "You have no marbles." Like you, you have, have no marbles. No marbles. <laughs> yes. Oh, because, of course, Serrano was like the best character in Major League as it is. So now you bring in this other guy to play opposite him. Forget it. Just get him a Forget bucket it. of chicken. Oh, <laughs> I love it. I do. I love I love Major League, but I really like Major League, too. Oh. And then Randy Quaid having an absolute fit out oh. in the outfield when Wild Thing comes back. It's like, ah, uh, I get I'm getting the chills thinking about that. You moment. make my butt sting. Like, I was like, can't. And also, I love this British shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving yes. to England. <laughs> oh my god. Major We're League talking two. about the wrong movie, Mark. <laughs> Major League Two is one of my favorite. I, I I'm it's serious. So like, it's it's a it, it's a hotel movie. I watched, uh, the car, a car broke down on a trip. We had to stay in a hotel, and I watched that. And I was like, this oh, movie is wow. the best movie ever. I, yes. I, I love it. But, yeah, going back to The Hunt. It's, <laughs> That's what we're talking about today, right? And, you know, it's 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 just – I don't think it's – you know what's kind of crazy? It's like if you're going to have a movie that's controversial, let it be Clockwork Orange. 
which I don't think should be controversial because it takes violence to such, such extremes mm -hmm. that it's a very nasty, uh, important piece of work because it doesn't treat violence as – like it doesn't – it glorifies violence, but it makes violence so ugly and it makes the system so ugly. And But what I'm saying is if you're going to have this amount of like Trump tweeting and people hating this movie, it should be for a movie that earns it. This is not that movie at right. all. This is – like, this is just a romp with yes. a badass action lead in it. Yep. And, like, you know, what, what do you and think about the first movie? just having opening? fun. I want to watch the outtakes from this movie. Oh, gosh, yeah. And there are some fun <laughs> behind-the-scenes stuff. It's fun to watch. No, okay, you love Oh, I Dutch. forgot to watch that video. You love gore. Oh, but they built an entire house in a Louisiana soundstage and built oh it in God. CAD. And then the stunt people built a bo the house. They did all the, ho like, boxes to, to make up the house, like, oh, all around. Oh, cool. And so they reenacted it in like a box house, like full of boxes. And then they built the set and like they, they built everything, like rigged everything, you know, put steel posts under the island. They did everything. Everything was positioned perfectly for that fight. That's so cool. Yeah. And it was fun watching them put it together and just build it. And, you know, the, the lights had to hang at Betty Gilpin's height and, and Heidi, uh, Heidi Moneymaker worked on it. I don't know if you know her. She, she worked on like, she was Scarlett Johansson stunt yeah, double. Yeah, she's like on a killer beast. stunt beast i watch her do some cool stuff on civil war and she just she just got a round of applause like she was on a motorcycle jumped on top of it then jumped on a car and everybody like hundreds of people were just like oh my gosh clapping <laughs> she's just a monster I love it's, it. and it's cool that she worked with these two kind of badass leads in this fight but i, I gotta ask you you love gore you love guts you love Not gory guts about it, but i'm okay with it if it comes up oh okay well what were your favorite kills in this movie Oh, see, it's so funny because you just asked that. And yesterday I recorded for our other podcast. And as soon as you asked that, a scene from that movie came to my head. So I have to think for a second about what this was. I think my favorite, which is really kind of silly, but my favorite is when Yoga Pants gets it <laughs> way early on. Because there's just something about the back of her head just blowing out. And it's just like, oh, OK. I think those early ones are especially good because I watch the movie. I watch everything with the, the closed captioning on now. And I saw a really interesting article recently about why we do that. Did yeah. you see that one? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I was like, okay, this makes me feel a little less old, but it also is helpful because all of my students, when I show films in class, they want the, the captions on. I'm like, yes, let's go. Well, the but mission anyway. is different. Like it's yes. TVs, like everything's different. So you're not going to get the same, read the article. It's good. Yeah, it's a super good it. article. Look Definitely look for this. But anyway, so I'm watching it with the captions on. It's just funny the way the characters are all labeled. Because, you know, watching it again after a while, I forgot all of those silly names. I didn't look at the IMDb first. So it's just great watching them. But, like, you know, Dead Sexy falls into this, like, spike pit. And she's just kind of hanging there. <laughs> it's just, I fell. Yes, you did. <laughs> like, <laughs> those early ones are my favorites. Because they're just, like... It, just what we were saying, it lays the groundwork. It says, look, this is going to be an absurd movie. It's going to be a romp, like you said. And it's just going to be chaos. Like, let's go. Not to mention, you don't know who we're focusing on at first. None. You know, like, this is another one of those reasons why I don't watch the trailers. Like, if you go into this movie cold, you don't know who the lead is yet. And they change it four times before you actually get to Betty Gilpin's character. Because you get, like, Glenn Howerton at first, right? He's mm. kind of the first caviar and wine. And Oh, do you have any mixed veggies? Oh, he's such a – oh, you just want to headlock that guy. Oh, yes. man, he is the absolute worst. Absolutely horrible. Uh, and then, But then when you get to the, the – air quotes protagonist, you have Yoga Pants. Then you have Big Game Hunter, right? I, I think yep. that was his – and then, like, Game Unquited. Shade. like And then you have Staten Island yep. with Ike Barinholt. So you have three protagonists before you get to the protagonist. Yes. And then she just comes up and rips everybody apart. And that's yep. like 30 some 40 minutes in when she starts wiping people out. And it's just, you know, even the first kill in this movie, when when um oh, the guy just Randy? gets stabbed. Yeah, when Randy yeah. just gets stabbed, when Steve Coulter, Ted the doctor, stabs him in the neck. Yeah. And then. <laughs> like laying down the towels. Like, could you just lay these, lay them down? And then him very calmly getting him to lay down. It just then like, pfft, you know, like it, that whole thing is completely gory and obnoxious too. And then she stabs somebody and then she comes out, Athena. Yep. You don't see her face with her heels, stabs him in the eye, then pulls it out while he's screaming. Like that, yep. that lays the gauntlet down pretty quick. And you know, a bunch of smug, you feel like you're sort of in safe hands too. 
when you find out how smug they are, then all the people get killed, and then the people in the ga- the ga- the convenience store, they kill Orlando, they kill Arkansas, they kill Staten Island. But then she's like, that's poisoned. He's like, you poisoned this? She's like, no, it has sugar in it. And they're just <laughs> talking about NPR, and they yes. have the polar bears, and they're just unbearable. And then so you're like, oh, okay, everybody's an idiot. Mark? What? They're unbearable polar bears. <laughs> I'm quitting. You should quit. Don't, uh, <laughs> End of episode. Uh, We're done. A Can't plus, get any better than five that. Five stars. But yeah, they. <laughs> she comes in and wipes them out, and you're like, oh, yeah. like then you sort of feel like you're in safe hands. And and then Ethan Suppley comes up, and you know he's right about the crisis actors. And then you know you get the guy like, hey man, I'll I'll let you guys get a head start. They're that stupid. And then yeah. Betty Gilpin just turns on the weird with the Jackrabbit story and the kick. And, and how intense she gets telling that story. Everybody thinks, oh, it's just, you know, oh, I know this story. The tortoise and the hare. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, <laughs> the revenge plot at the end. It was like, oh, OK, we're going further with this. Your mom told you that story? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like Don. I really like Don oh, becomes God. quite a kind of endearing. Do you think Don's a bad guy? I don't think I was going to ask you that. I'm like, did Don was Don involved? I don't think Don was involved because everybody Athena's else. Way too smart. Yeah, they were complete idiots. Yes. He was not like he would have to be a Hillary Swank esque actor to be as good as he was as Don. Does that make sense? Yes, totally. So he's yeah, I think Don just got got, and I feel yeah, bad for she Don. She was listening. She knew exactly what happened, and she knew how to get this one alone. You know, like she knew how to dispatch with Don. You know, get it into her head that he might be it, and she knows that that uh, Crystal's going to take him out. We need to find that Jack Rabbit speech and let you recite it on this episode. <laughs> Oh, the story you mean? It's gotta yeah. be there somewhere. When she comes out, when the, when the tur- Jack Rabbit comes in, kills the wife and child box turtle, and then murders the box murders the box turtle, then eats all of its food every drop. Yep. Your mom told you that. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. But you know you know what I love about this is what I love about Crystal May Creasy and Betty Gilpin is that she's odd, but it it feels organic. This is a very you know when sometimes in movies where actors make choices. Yes. And you see that choice on screen, and you're like, eee. like I love Adrian Brody, but his he accent in Predators, when he, oh, I am the Predator Hunter, and you're like, uh-huh. and when other actors decide to lean into tough, into being tough, like I am tough, and you just, you see that this, you wa- all you do is watch that decision or mm-hmm. listen to that decision the whole time. Right. This one feels very lived in and cared for, and she is an oddball. Crystal is. Mm-hmm. She's a she probably has PTSD, right? Like since she was in mm-hmm. Afghanistan, she probably has. She's an odd duck. Yeah. And I, I just, but I love like when she's mm, like she's just ah <laughs> when she leans down and kicks kicks making Blair in the face. It's yep. <sighs> it's just so refreshing. Like she's a character who it, you don't see Betty Gilpin, you see Crystal May Crazy. Uh, yeah. Yep. 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 You know, you know like. You're you're talking about like Adrian Brody. I the first person who came to mind for me was Mia Goth, who is really really good in what she does. But I've decided she's not for me mm-hmm. because I only see Mia Goth. Like yeah. I see Mia Goth. Like she's wonderful in Pearl. She was great in X. She's great in, in Infinity Pool, which is a hmm, kind of movie. But all I see is Mia Goth playing these characters. Here it's Crystal May Crazy. I don't see Betty Gilpin here. That's a really you know? great point. And that happens so rarely for me, unless it's an unknown actor, you know, like an unknown actor in a role. But like, I can maybe, off the top of my head, Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx in Collateral. Mm-hmm. It's like, a great movie. I don't think about their them. Like I, I think that's maybe the one Tom Cruise movie where I think about the character. I agree. And not that. I remember watching Gladiator. And oh, yes. Russell Crowe, he, he was Maximus <laughs> for yes. me. Uh, yes. And it's and, and I don't know what it is about the and Fast Commodus. And Joaquin Phoenix is Commodus oh in that. Gosh. I mean, oh. my God. And then you watch him later in Joker, and he's he's I don't remember that character's name, but yes, like it's him. And you were never really here when he's in that, and just even like no, this I is gonna seen that. I gotta see that. This is gonna be a weird one, but whenever I talk about Fast ah, and Furious, have you met me? I like the weird ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a good one. It's really worth watching. Okay. It, and and this is weird, but Fast and Furious, where it's. Love I talk about the – I say Brian Dom. I say I say Dom. I say Brian. I say Roman. I say, yeah. you know, Cypher. Like, I don't talk about the char- – these these characters exist in my world. 
100 percent i'm right there with you when you know it's like what's letty up to you know yes i think the only people i say are i say dwayne johnson and jason statham because they're dwayne johnson and jason statham see that's exactly like they are not their characters at the rock and it's jason statham you know like absolutely every time and look at sun kang everyone's like han han Mm -hmm. han han even giselle it's like giselle like it's yes it's i don't know whether that's just i love the characters but uh, you are at, like this is body them. They're they're perfect. I love them. It's my favorite movie franchise. And told someone told me I was high. And I was like, get oh, off it. They're, they're wrong. And I was like, well, sit down. We're gonna <laughs> you're gonna listen to me monologue like like Goth does in uh, Pearl for eight minutes. Oh. <laughs> yes. I will say or though, you're gonna and... get, or you're gonna get the stare like you got right at the end of that movie <laughs> if you don't let you monologue on uh, Fast and Furious. I'll just stare at him during the. <laughs> How long is the credits? I'm gonna stare at you for that long. Yes. Oh they man. You know, one time, this is a weird story, but speaking of creepy staring, I was working on this, you know those true crime murder shows where they do reenactments? Oh, yeah. So I, I worked on on some of those when I when I was in the production industry in Atlanta, and this is probably 2013, 2014. And so I was one of the crew members, but they needed extra people to play cult members. And so they're like, Mark, just take a seat. They put like a weird shirt on me and... I was sitting in there listening to the sermon. I was kind of like, yeah, yeah, like trying to act. And I'm like, man, Mark, that's the creepiest face I've ever seen. And I was, I was like, that's just me. <laughs> it's just my face. But on camera, they're like, oh, we found our villain. And I'm like, what is that? Like, what? <laughs> also, someone told me I looked like Voldemort once. But like, no, like, no, the actor who plays Voldemort. I'm like, oh, Ray Fiennes. Ray Fiennes. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a better way of phrasing it. Yeah, saying like, you look like Ray Fiennes is better than saying you look like Voldemort. Like, I got what they were saying, but I was like, yikes. <laughs> But yeah, speaking of creepy smiles, I just, that really shook me because I'm not, I don't, I hate when a camera's on me and they're like, yeah, that's creepy. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I, just look, I was like, my normal face is creepy. Hey, what can you do? That I episode's mean, you know, out there somewhere. I don't even know what it is. Swamp Murders? Swamp Murders, I think is the name of it. Swamp, I'm going to be hunting this down. Yeah. I got to find this. I want to see this, this this face. Yeah, I was on, I, I think it was an epi- I think it was Swamp Murders. I'll have the call sheet somewhere. I have a photo of it too. Amazing. But yeah, Swamp Murders. I think that's it. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, going back to this movie. Uh, her, her performance oh, yeah, we're is here to talk about a movie. Okay, it's yeah. so organic, though. Like, it's just so... It's perfect. And what does the... Hmm, I think in most actors' hands, I would not like that moment. But mm-hmm. with her, I felt like it was perfect. Yes. Just... I know I, we're just going to say this over and over again, but she's... A, I love this character. Every time I watch it, more and more. Yes. It's Because you know what? We watch a lot of movies, right? We do. And a lot of we them do. are kind of stock. Mm-hmm. This performance isn't stock. I agree. They let her kind of do her thing mm-hmm. on it. This is so nice. It's just cool how much you get from her. Like, it, it, she's not this over-the-top character so much. She's in an over-the-top situation. But you kind of see, like, she does those weird little everyday kind of movements where she's like, mm, you know. But then... <laughs> She, but you get what she's saying, you know, so it's like the calmness with which she wakes up and we're watching through yoga pants eyes and like she's going and she does the needle and she checks it out and then she just takes off. And th- that centeredness that she has in this horrific situation and she just very calmly goes through everything. So it's like you can tell she's got that combat training. You're right that she's probably got some PTSD, that she's got this ability to kind of compartmentalize what she needs to do next the complexity of the character in these very small facial expressions or movements or whatever before she has to kick somebody's butt you know but i just think there's so much to that and i think that's what really makes this character special she noticed the bomb on the car yes she she sets up the pillbox attack and just wipes all those people out i love that moment too where she's like you know uh she's like because you're a woman do you think you're afforded mercy because you're a girl (laughs) no and this (laughs) boom What's wrong with you, girl? And I love when she's talking to the 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 guy who's training everybody. And she's like, you know, Afghanistan. What about you, National Guard? <laughs> and yeah, like, did you see any cop? And then thanks him for his service. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, so you been in the shit? Yeah, you. Well, I'm in it now. <laughs> uh, doesn't she say to him, "You're kind of in the shit now"? Yeah, no, he says it. He's he like, says well, it. Okay. Like, oh, and then she seen? says, "It's a nice way to look at it, right?" Yeah, nice way to look okay. at it. <laughs> you were you were in a, there's a movie called Tears of the Sun. What is the sun yes. crying? Oh, these people are the worst. Oh, Ava DuVernay just liked my Haiti photo. DuVernay, DuVernay. <laughs> like, oh, this is terrible. Like, like you just terrible, it. terrible people. <laughs> like you gendered it, and that. <laughs> I don't I don't care about people getting murdered, 
but I do think that the illegal poacher, big game hunter, who killed mm-hmm. the endangered species. The, yeah, it's like one, rhinos or something, that right? That would affect, because, and listen, people who just podcast or tweet, whatever, like, you know, that's what the internet is. That's what the internet's always been. People reactively yeah. saying horrible things. And I wonder, like, what it was that made these people stand out specifically. Like, well, what about how, them? You saw who they picked, who they picked. Well, yeah. <laughs> like, they went through that whole thing. But, I mean, how many people did they call out of that list? Because, like, they didn't have – I mean, some of the things, they didn't really say too much. You know, it wasn't so crazy and over the top. And it makes me wonder. Like, you've seen other people who are – far worse <laughs> but these are the ones they focused on i mean i guess maybe creating those characters the filmmakers were probably like well this may be too far let's not go over the boundary let's just go up against it yeah and wait and also too this is really random but how much work went into getting everybody to croatia i know it's a completely different topic but that's my brain has been falling like they had to kidnap people from, part? from wyoming or land oh orlando God. by yeah. Sturgill simpson they had to well, go... she's got her own her own plane, right? So I just think it's like. But they need multiple planes to kidnap everybody at once, right? I mean, I guess, or were they just like airport hopping? But that's Orlando to Wyoming to Arkansas to Staten Island. That's days. I guess, and I mean, they would need extra drugs to keep everybody out, I guess. But how else do you get everybody on one plane? I mean, she bought those bottles from the bottom of the ocean so i mean there's mercenaries out there i also love the premise of this that this was real because they said it was real yeah like this wasn't actually a thing but that they were like fine you want to say that we're gonna do anything then we're gonna do the thing (laughs) that was just i don't remember that from the first time i watched it watching it again i was like oh yeah it's their annual thing and i saw the text and at least we have the hunt coming up i'm like oh yeah that's right i remember that and then when it came up it's like yeah we don't actually ever do this i was like oh that's right (laughs) like this wasn't a thing and now that they like have the money it's just crazy and and then she goes, wait, so you, this wasn't a thing, but now it's a thing because people said it was a thing. Mm-hmm. And then Hillary Swank goes, yeah, like they're all psychotic. <laughs> totally. Like they're, they're 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 bringing people and happily murdering them. Yes, but well, they're you, terrible people, deplorables. Remember. But I think okay, <laughs> so we're talking about blunt caricatures, right? And we're we're talking about. But I, I mean, I don't, this went. This is a satire, right? Or this yes. is a. So it goes too far. But I mean, look at the people on our planet now. And I don't mm-hmm. want to get into it too much. But I mean, I, I mean, listen. There, there's a huge divide. There was a huge divide created. There's always been a divide, but then there's a gulf created. Yes. And so I do think people on both sides were looking at each other like, look at these idiots. Look at these. T- like these people need to die. Look at these people. This is that. Still do. And yeah, exactly. And I just think that. I, you know, they said that um, like they wanted this movie to be a movie that you could sit down with your family, your uncle you hate, and you guys can have a good time watching it. And to, I don't know that no. that's the case. <laughs> yeah, and it's, but I, I think it does do a good, decent job of skewering both sides, and I think it does kind of point at the ridiculousness of the situation. But I don't think it's going to change anybody. No. At all. So people thought like "Don't Look Up" was gonna change people's minds. It's like, no, you can't. You can I, I, I sincerely feel like when it comes to this kind of thing, you're not gonna change people's minds. Avatar, like, hey, don't cut down trees. <laughs> right. <laughs> that didn't right. work too well. Uh, I doubt it's gonna help whale hunting. The sequel. No. Uh, but I think they also understood that, and they just went for a blood fest as yes. well. Like this doesn't. I think it's handled well this movie, and I, I think. The lower scores for it. I don't know. I just think this is a fun flick. But I think I'm surprised it got as low as it did. It's it's up here. People yeah. like people got it in their head that this was a bad movie, and then they reviewed it as such. Yeah. That's what I believe. People don't like to think. And also, they don't want a movie after they think. The main complaint of Don't Look Up is that it was a sledgehammer movie, and it's and it's kind of like, well, yeah, like that's <laughs> that's like, a satire. That's what the director wanted to do. He wanted. Mm-hmm. There, like even Big Short. The, oh, I love that one okay, too. The director of the Big Short, I'm convinced, thinks humanity is stupid, because <laughs> most of us are. <laughs> in, big, in Big Short, me, me included. Uh, but in Big Short, he he has like Margot Robbie in a bathtub explaining things. He has Selena Gomez explaining things. He's basically telling the audience, "You are too dumb 
you need to watch a woman in a bathtub explain things to you in layman's terms for you to understand. And so what I love about it is that may be what he's saying, but the viewer is going to say, oh, he says that that guy's too dumb. (laughs) It's it's like that brilliant passing off of it's not me. (laughs) I'm smart enough. I know, but I'm going to laugh at the fact that he's talking about that guy. Yeah, dummies watch this movie need to explain. Everybody who watched it was like, oh, dummies need to. Oh, man. Yeah. I was thrilled. I'm like, I am a dummy. I don't know about this stuff. So thank you for explaining it to me. (laughs) And listen, he got Oscar nominations for it. And Don't Look Up got a ton of press. Like it's. It, and But you're right. These movies aren't going to change the world. But I do no. think his movies are much more divisive mm-hmm. than this one. This one just sort of comes down to a seven-minute kitchen fight, and Crystal's awesome. Right. But Absolutely true. So it's – and also they're dealing with caricatures. And so mm-hmm. sometimes I think when you're – this movie doesn't really have a message. It's like – No. No, not at all. Its message is like be a crystal. But then you don't want to be a crystal. Like, Well, it, the other thing is the story – Right? Like the story of the jackrabbit and the box turtle. Typically, it's like, you know, slow and steady wins the race. The idea of, you know, oh, be the tortoise. Don't be the hare. Don't be hasty. Don't be that. She's the jackrabbit, yeah. though. It's, so it's this whole thing. It's like we're going to take this story and we're going to turn it on its head. She's the one, you know, like she's the ringer the whole time where she like, for example, when she's where they're lying on the floor. One second. At the end of the flight. Oh, that was my that was another real good moment where they both like go through the glass window and just, all right, wait, wait, wait we just need a second. <laughs> And they're both like, yeah. Um, but later on, when um, she turns and she's like, you know, why do you keep calling me Snowball? And she says, well, you, you know, when Crystal says to, to Athena, like, well, you're the one who should be Snowball. You know, and she's like, you've read Animal Farm? Like, yes. <laughs> like this whole thing, this whole expectation. But there isn't a message. There's not no. some overarching moral that we're all expected to learn and walk away with with this. I mean, it's all silliness. I mean, satire is meant to show you how absurd you are. That's and, it. It's poking fun at yourself. And then the quote unquote pig walks away dressed up at the end like <laughs> like that as yeah. well. But it's yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, it's poking fun at yourself. You're not there's not a life lesson here. This isn't going to change the world. But I do think it'll do a good job of just – but also, too, Crystal wasn't meant to be there. So if they That's brought the all the – idi- if they brought – like, so everybody in this movie is an idiot. So yes. if they brought a bunch of idiots over there, they're a bunch of idiots. They're just going to kill each other because they're idiots. So the, it's not like they brought a deplorable over who actually won them over. Like, they brought the wrong person. They brought the wrong deplorable. <laughs> yeah. And so – like if th- there's no like th- if there's a message it's just if there's a message of this movie it's just do your research better <laughs> hire me yes. hire me to find you your go. humans that are going to be hunted i will find them right and i won't get the wrong one i won't accidentally get a murder machine who gets a food processing blade in her stomach oh and then does a flip that then injects it into another oh woman's oh my god and it was the best that moment too when she was just like Ugh. Oh, like god. okay my favorite line in the movie, though, is when the, the military trainer goes, she's been training for eight months. <laughs> eight months is nothing. I know she had a punching bag in her office, which is Jason Blum's office in real oh, is life. It? I didn't yeah. know that. And so she, she trains and she was a million dollar baby. Mm-hmm. But it's he's like, she's been training for eight months. And it's like, like, you know, when you box, that's nothing. When you do jujitsu, no. that's nothing. When you do karate, yep. that's nothing. So I just thought those she's been training for eight months. And Crystal's like, oh, brother. And this guy's impressed. And I love when when Crystal's just beating up on Athena, and Athena has to pull the gun. She's like, "You cheating bitch! Like you cheating!" <laughs> and then when she gets her skin pinched, the most painful oh, moment. It's the worst, right? It's not the guts. It's not the headshots. No, it's the skin pinch. It's that pinch because you know what that feels like. Oh man! And she just starts yelling. And then you know what else I love too is Crystal is not graceful. When Crystal no. jumps off it's a that mess. rope, it's amazing. Yeah, she flomps on that table and just yes. thuds on it. This isn't yep. a, you know, sometimes I believe that, like, I think stunt people are amazing and the Oscars do need a category for them to be awarded. Absolutely. Yes. But sometimes their movements are a little too graceful. If that, like sometimes you watch it and you're like, they're just, it looks like they're in test, like they don't even, they're just, it's like a dance and that's mm. fine. But this fight I think was, was coordinated to choreographed to perfection because crystal's a bruiser mm-hmm. and she's she's like n- they're not this isn't a dance this is mm-hmm. a this is a barnhouse brawl yes and when when crystal <laughs> when she falls on things you go oh um yeah. just thump. and when they hit the glass when they both hit the glass that hurt 
And then later on when they try to come back in and she's like, wait, no, 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 no more glass. Open the door and then they're going to go through. <laughs> like, it's amazing. Oh, and when she gets like, her... They're both so exhausted. They're both just <laughs> done. But they know they have to keep going. So it's just it's funny because there's there's a mutual respect there. Mm hmm. It shouldn't be. It's just really funny. It's that much better because of those moments, I think. Just one second. One second. <laughs> and both... Hey, I feel it because I would never have made it as long as they did. Oh, I would have been. She went through the fireplace. Oh, I would have been. Never done. mind that. <laughs> and Crystal's laughing at it. She loves I love it. it. And it's I love so that, fun. Like, she tackles. Like, I love that she just barrels into Athena. And I love that Athena. Like, I love the name of Athena. It just makes me so happy like that athena's battling this 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 war between them and just watching how like athena's throwing kicks and crystal's just i don't know she's like goldberg Flailing limbs. remember goldberg <laughs> from wcw oh my that's god. the best yes that's the best i can think of and that's oh a weird like brock lesnar i do remember and the fact that i know who you're talking yeah. about what's yeah. it saying about the two of us <laughs> she's just barreling people over and just storming it and picking her up and slamming her and it's just such a – it's a seven-minute fight, and it – It's incredible. And I feel like they let it live, too. It's not overly cut. They, they kind of let it happen, in, and I think that's – this is really random, but this that's why I love Rennie Harlan. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, Mark, Rennie Harlan again. No, but he's great. You watch his action movies, and you can see yes. – there's stunt doubles, obviously, but you can see any act shot that an actor can be in. They're in, mm -hmm. and he lets the camera sit and lets them fight. Gina Davis in A Long Kiss Goodnight, they sit mm -hmm. on her a lot, not like literally – but uh, the camera, <laughs> the, they just sit. Rennie just sits on her. It, yeah. It's called it's a movie called Sit. And I want to see that movie. Sitting on a train. It's just Rennie Harlan sitting on Gina yep. Davis on a train. On the roof train. of the train, though. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> With It'll his be hair, the roof of the train. His hair 100%. flowing in the wind. Yes. Yeah, Ducking. Just like, casually laying back as the tunnel comes and then sitting back up again. <laughs> oh, and there's zombies. I would watch that movie. Yeah, there's zombies, too. What, what do you think? Maybe, but they can't quite get themselves up the ladder. So it's like they get up there and then some one of the heads gets cut off, so it falls. Do another one. It's sort of just like inept zombies. Whoa. Like, they're never a threat, but they're there. Yes. They're just there. And so this person is basically doing sit-ups as they, you know, as the tunnels go by and just <laughs> making sure their foot is out of the reach of the zombies as they come up. Oh, this movie needs to happen. Sitting yes, on a please. train, directed yes. by Rennie Harlan. <laughs> just sitting on, sitting on Gina yes. Davis. Yes. We need Willie Nelson to do the, the theme song. <sighs> sitting on a <the> train. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, man. And sit. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> sitting on a train. But yeah, like they, they let the action hold a little bit, and that makes me happy. I and agree. They, the two just bunkhouse brawl it. They yeah. just get into like a like just a good old scrap. And this movie's 90 minutes. It's the perfect length. It's the perfect length for like an action movie. It's not too long. It doesn't drag out. It doesn't get super complicated. It's here's the scenario. We're going to give you a couple of tense scenes, but then people are just going to beat the hell out of each other. Even with the flashback and a mm -hmm. cut, kind of a cut to other characters, it never feels disjointed. Right. There's always a progress to it. And yeah, I mean, 90 minutes. Like, listen, mm -hmm. I don't mind longer movies. I really don't. I, I could I could care less how long a movie is. But when I see that's under two hours and I'm doing a, an episode about it, I'm happy. Yes, uh, it's, I agree. It's like, oh, 90. I think I sent you a message. I'm like, 90 minutes. Ah! <laughs> you did. You did. And well, it's great because, like, I can watch that movie before going to bed at night and still be able to get up in time, you know, because I'm not up too late. I, I don't up... have to split the movie up in time. Because it's three hours. You're splitting it. Two and a half hours you're you splitting it. You have to. It. Absolutely. And, or I could get up at 5 a.m. and watch a half hour every morning before yeah, I I'm get not ready. Doing and, that. Oh, yeah, I get up. I have to get up. I have to get up at 5. <laughs> so you get the small child. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so not I... getting up any earlier than I have to. I get up really early to get work done. And then, uh, you know. Oh, but, you're one of those. I can't do that. I, I was yeah. never that human. But then I realized I, I, <laughs> I had You've to be. become. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's such a, it's a, it's 90 minutes. I think Zobo was really into it. You know, I think the writers, you know what I like too is I, when I when I think about Damon Lindelof, when I think about the Qs, Carlton Qs and the Qs, when I think about J.J. Abrams, you know, that whole group. Yes. All I think about is too much. Like Lost. Like I love Fringe, but it's a lot. I mean, it's just it these, is. like the Star Wars. Like, I I just think that these guys do so much sometimes. Like, and then they just build unnecessary worlds. And mm -hmm. and this one's not that. It's just lean, mean. Ninety. They yep. wrote it with a uh, Blumhouse budget in mind. Mm -hmm. And I I think the writing's good on it. I think Zobel. I mean, the dude did, he he's directed 
what the leftovers he had done hbo he had done american gods he'd done compliance that's a good time it's this <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it said no, one. no, that one, not so much, but the, um, you know, like the other ones I just think are, I don't know. Like I do really like the premise of the leftovers. I actually read the book it was based on, um, you know, some of those things I think are cool. I loved the, the first season of American gods. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was, a, but it, you're right. It's absolutely world building and this giant, like ethereal, but back alley <laughs> kind of thing. And this just doesn't, this is so much lighter, yeah. I think. It's just a breezy 90 minutes. And, you know, Jason Blum, Blum, this feels weird saying Blum, not Blum House. Jason Blum House. I, I know, right? He he said one of his biggest disappointments is that this movie just got butchered before it came out. Like he yeah. said that that's one of his biggest. He said the pre-release controversy of The Hunt ruined the whole movie. I mean, it ruined the release of the movie. The Hunt was going to be a big hit movie, and the controversy before the movie destroyed the release. When I get asked what's my biggest regret running the company, is that no one got to see the hunt because of that controversy. And I, I do think that and I hate going back to 2020 and 2019 because it feels like forever. But the marketing, I remember, made it seem like that. Whereas, and during those politically charged times, that initial one trailer just blew everything up. Mm -hmm. And if they just would have maybe focused on Crystal Creasy or, if, you know, maybe spoil it a little bit, right? Just, just let people know that there's idiots on both sides. Yes. I think it would have done a lot better, but they really didn't think about that in yeah. initial trailer and release and talk. I and agree. that just blew up the movie and then it got released in 2020. And then nobody was seeing anything because, you know, people aren't looking to that. Most people aren't me and they're willing to pay 20 bucks to see their first run at home. Like I just. Hey, we did. Like, we, I was happy to. I was like, I don't care as long as I can still see them. I'm in. We had Disney Plus. And I think mm -hmm. we paid for Mulan. It's like, we're at home. We pay, pay. I did not do that one because that one make me mad. I'm like, look, I pay for the subscription. Give me the movie. Don't make me pay twice. I get all the screeners now, so it doesn't matter. So ah, I can watch rub it in. <laughs> rub it in. <laughs> but when, when we could, I did, right? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, yeah. Like, just support movies. And yes. in in this one, this one, I think, just a bummer. I'm bummed out. But yeah. Crystal's the best. Now, I did something stupid. Oh, boy. What did you do? I asked you to, and, and me, to come up with our favorite action movie characters of the 2020s. So yes. 2020, 2021, 20, 20, <sighs> 2020, 2021, 2022, and you know what, 2023, like Plane's a badass movie. I, I haven't seen those. it yet. Talk about talk about 90 minutes and just tense and good and fun. It's okay. a good time. But my All list right. blew up to about 40 people, uh, and then I had to <laughs> then I had to narrow it down. And it was just it's a pain in the butt. So I want you to tell me your picks and then maybe i can take some out so well see that's what i was hoping because i i did do my like little brainstorm thing i didn't come up with anywhere near as many as you did there were a lot of action like you do a quick search like action movies 2020 action movies 2021 there were a lot that i didn't see and i was like okay but i saw like the main ones and so like some of them really stood out i don't have them ranked though i kind of have them in order of like as the movie was presented to me i'm that's trying right. to think like do you want me to rank them? Should I put somebody at, at the top or? Uh, do, do your thing. I trust you. I don't know. I'm trying to. I think the 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 character that brought me the most joy is actually two of them, and that's Sub Zero and Scorpion in the new Mortal Kombat. So Joe Taslim. Oh, him and yeah, uh, Hiroyuki Sonata. Yeah, played. yeah, yeah. Oh my God, that movie just brought me such joy, and I remember it being really hard to avoid trailers for that one because I really wanted to look. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I love that game. I bought an Xbox just so I could play Mortal Kombat X. Like I grew up with that game, yeah. and I was never any good at it. I'm no. a button masher. I used and I, in backpack forward. Oh, oh, over and over and over. That is exactly. Oh, my God, Mark. You, like, read and my I mind. And I used E-Honda. It's the only thing I did. E-Honda. <laughs> oh, my that. God. I can't believe you just said that. It's all I did. And people got so mad at me because that's all I would do, and then I would win. Um, Learn how to but, block. Oh, that and the movie, the original movie, is such cheese, and I love it's it. Beautiful. People, so, okay, watch that movie again, everybody. The, hmm. That movie was one of the to. first movies in 90, like, American Back films to use Hong Kong wire work in it before Ooh. the Matrix. There you go. Before like they had a huge Hong Kong stunt team. Robin mm -hmm. Shao was a big, you know, Hong Kong player in a lot of those movies. And so you watch it, 
and and you know I love the endings of it. What it's it's just a really like they they'll throw ten strikes at a time before a cut. So I'm telling mm-hmm. y'all. Watch it again. It's a good, good fight. It's a funny. I love. It. It's incredible, I incredible. It. So like when this one came out, I was all about it. I took my godson to see it, and the two of us are just like, yes, this is amazing. So I think like those are, and I have to. You rank them as the same because you get both. Mm-hmm. You have to go with the both of them. In that same movie, Kano is incredibly iconic. Josh Lawson's version of Kano is so good in that movie. He steals every scene he's in. Let's see who else I like. I'm a big Dave uh, Haslam guy. Fast Six, The Night Comes for Us. That's one of the best uh, action movies. Have you watched Night uh, Comes for Us? I haven't. I keep meaning to. That's why it's like uh, Joe Taslam murder. Oh, I need to. I need to see it. Do you want to do like a one to one? Yeah, like I I'll give do that. one, you give me one. So Let's I'll do, do that. I'm gonna do the baby. Uh, this is a twofer because they're a team. But I'm gonna go. With, there's a movie called Baby Assassins that was released by Weldo so USA. Do all the ones I haven't seen. This and, is gonna be great. And I, I love Baby Assassins. It's a, it's a smaller film. It's a Japanese film, but it's about these two high school girls who are also assassins. Oh they, yes. They they have to they move in together after high school, but they're forced to get part time jobs <laughs> because. The, the assassins aren't worried about murder or the cops. They're worried about the IRS. So they have to have, like, W-2s, like, to prove that they can pay their attendance so then they're, they're not Love audited. Love it. <laughs> but these two, you know, they're legitimate, like, sociopath, psychopaths. You know, like, they're... I can't. Like, they're sociopaths. Like, like they don't fit in with society. And it, it's... It, it, like, listen, it, I'll, a lot of people, you know, I, I... Some people loved it. Some people hated it. But Megan and I watched it and just brought me so much joy because these two ladies are just... There's badasses, and they just chill out and eat ramen, and and then they they listen to Yakuza monologue, and then they just murder them. And I it, love it's, it. It's it's just a really fun movie. And um, Akari uh, Takishi, she uh, uh, she's so alive in that movie, and I think it's one of her first films. And oh, cool! I feel bad for her. I should have listened to the pronunciation of their names before I got on here. My apologies. But yeah, she's just the coolest, and it's just she's probably got a good future ahead of her, huh? This is a fun indie Japanese film about assassins, and so those are my two, right there. I love it. I love it. So we both start off with a pair. Yeah, that's cool. Hey. That is cool. Um, I think I want to go next with where's my Paul Dano's version of the Riddler. Oh yeah. In the Batman is just so good. You know, I you, I am a I'm a villains girl. And so when you give me Batman movies, I don't care about who's playing Batman. I don't care. I want to know what the villains are going to be like. How are they coming up? And he's so creepy. And I love him. He's, he's a petulant so child. Oh, good. Like, when, the way he yells and like, like, but he's a murderer, but he's petulant. Oh. And he's when he learns that Batman might not be as smart and he's like, oh. right. He's so like disappointed. He's like, I can't play with him the way I want to. Oh man, and then the carpet thing, like, ugh, he's oh, so good. well, you I know mean, what? I loved, I loved Jim Carrey's Riddler even. Oh gosh, yeah. Like I loved the the riddle me this, riddle me that, who's afraid of the big black bat, big big black bat line. I thought that was great, but then like this Riddler is even better to me. Like he's dark and gritty and like screwed up, and I love that stuff. I love when they're really scary. He's kind of a Fincher, Zodiac. Mm big fan of that kind of thing yeah he's he's and so you know what i'm just i'm just gonna go with it i'm gonna go with that the batman and i'm I gonna take it. zoe kravitz as Catwoman, yes and i'm adding kimmy in there do it because she's so good in kimmy right and yes you know what's funny <laughs> uh, i was watching kimmy with my my wife megan and there's a scene where these henchmen have to chase her mm-hmm. i'm like that would be horrible like i think zoe kravitz could run for years Probably. And, and just watching them chase her, I'd be like, I would never be a henchman. <laughs> I would quit. I was like, if I have to chase Zoe Kravitz through the streets of Seattle, I'm done. Yeah, like, you're done over. for. And yeah, yeah, she's going to outrun you. Like, I love her in Catwoman, but I, I got to go with the ending scene of Kimmy. And I don't want to wreck it, but there's a nail gun. And it's so efficient and fast and just beastie boys. And, and it, it doesn't happen the way you think it's going to happen. Yep. And it's Chekhov's nail gun. And, I love it. And it's just, and I love her in Batman too. I think she's like pitch perfect in that as well. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to take Zoe Kravitz from. What's really funny in the Batman is I also wear a night guard. <laughs> and every nice. time I clean it, I think of her doing it. Right? It's... Every single time. And it's like, this is weird that this was my takeaway from that movie. <laughs> her cleaning the night guard. She's so good. She's, I, oh. she's. That was such an, I feel like that movie's underseen. 
Not enough people have seen that, and it's so good. It's annoying. Yes. I should just do an episode of it and just push it out there for the world to, to learn to about it. I hope it's still out there. It's got to be, right? Probably HBO Max. I hope it's still on there. So. They're getting we'll rid of everything. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Right, so Which who, makes me sad. Who is your third pick? All right. And, and so my... So, Let's do something. I would pick okay. Betty Gilpin one, but let's leave her out because she's not even on my list. Okay. Okay. Because I figured you had her. So actually, I kind of cheated because I did Sub Zero and Scorpion, and I did Kano. But three for one, it's fine. If yeah. all the characters it's in the movie, it's cool. I I pulled Guy Ryan Reynolds and Free Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's such a, talk about another fun, silly movie. Um, and just I don't know, like that he was. That's the role he was born to play i agree and i still insist that they missed the opportunity not having blake lively play the blonde in the bank the one that he kind of grabs and kisses like why why didn't they get her for like that five minutes yeah spring it could have been so fun i love the way they troll each other online and she's like i like i I paid for disney plus to watch my husband have horrible stress for (laughs) soccer games Yes, I saw that. I'm like, I can't. I just, I think they're they're so funny together. But I thought that movie was such a blast. I, I remember um, I went to a screening for it, and I had no idea what it was. Mm-hmm. I, had, I was like, Ugh, what is this? Sean Levy directed it, and I was like, this is a really fun movie. And yes, I think next to maybe the voices, it's probably probably maybe buried. Mm. It's probably his best buried. performance <gasps> because. Buried is so good. You know, Buried is written by a guy who went to the high school I teach hey, at. Hey, were, were you the one who taught him? No, no, he was before my time. I Got think it. he's about my age, oh, too, okay. so he he was in high school when I was in high school. But they, uh, they, he, I think sometimes pithy, improvised Reynolds mm-hmm. is not my cup of tea, like Red Notice I agree. and stuff. But in Free Guy, he's so earnest. And like, yes. that's, that's, he opened up a little bit in it. I learned a lot about him in that Wrexham show. And so I, I'm a much bigger fan. I've always liked it, but now I'm a much bigger fan of his. Oh, that's so, cool. Uh, all right. So this is tough. I know. We're getting there, huh? This is really random. But I'm just going to take – this is really random. But I'm going to take Joey King from The Princess. <gasps> from The Princess? Yeah, not Bullet Train. I was going to Bullet Train. <laughs> because <laughs> – She's good in that too. It's a movie about this princess whose castles like – her tower is overtaken, and she has to fight her way up and down the tower. Oh, I heard about and this, yeah. but I didn't actually see it. Yeah. Olga Kirilenko's in it, and and Aaron Newworth is the one who recommended it to me. He just goes, "It's fun." Oh. Aaron, Aaron, I like Aaron because he's like, "It's fun. Just watch it." So I watched it, and the reason I had a Joey King is because she she's in a lot of it. Yeah. She put a lot of work in. So all the sword fights, all the running, all the kicks, all the flips. She's young, so I mean, she can do all that. But you can tell that she put an insane amount of work into it. Oh, absolutely. And so while watching it, I was like, that's still her. That's still her. That's her. That's still her. That's still her. That's still <laughs> You're her. You're just like She's tracking funny. her the whole time. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like, but in a lot of movies, they don't do that. Like as much, I love the movie Prey and we talked about mm-hmm. it on the podcast. It, it hasn't been released. Well, it'll probably be released. No, it'll be released after this, but it's, I, I absolutely love Abram and Thunder in that movie. Nauru is amazing. She's on my list. But there's a fight scene in it where they never show her face and it's clearly a mm-hmm. stunt double the whole time. And yeah. so that's fine. I mean, they didn't have much time to train for this, and and you know who knows what was going on. But you're watching it, and it's just never her, and that's fine. And you notice. That's a good point. You and, notice, yeah. And she carries the movie. Like she really does carry. I'm not Absolutely. knocking on her performance because she holds it together perfectly. And a lot of men don't do their own stunts either. Watch watch these movies. You have dudes with wigs. But I just really appreciated how Joey King was in so much of the princess that I'm going to add her in here. So that's what I'm going for. I love it. I love that. Yeah, I actually did have um, Nehru on here. I am going to go next to the character Amenza, played by Sheila Atim in The Woman King. Hey, I had um, Lashana Lynch. I love it. See, I put her on here too, but between the two of them, like after I saw that movie, I'm like, I want to be Amenza when I grow up. Yeah. Like, I just want to be that character. I just feel like she she's the one who drew my eye, and I was just thought she was so cool. I just, I that movie, I can't stand that that movie is locked out of the Oscar nominations, because it's yeah, so me... good. Yeah, don't, listen, <laughs> best actress, right? Yes. It should have been Michelle Yeoh, Kate Blanchett, Daniel Deadweiler, Viola Davis, 
and Andrea Riseborough. I don't want to hear it. Fine with that. Andrea Riseborough is incredible that. into Leslie. I don't want to hear it. Like she's. I hate that the joy of this has been stolen from her. Yeah, and the, listen, I get that. You know, it caught. Well, oh no, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. It has to be okay. I, I'm going to redo it. It's going to be Michelle Yeoh. Yes. Tang Wei for mm. decision to leave. No, Michelle Yeoh, Kate Blanchett, Tang Wei, Daniel Deadweiler, and Andrea Riseborough. Those okay. are my five. So I love I love Viola Davis. Yes. But I think Tang Wei gave like the gave like the best for, like that's my that's my picks. I'm just that's saying, I'm putting it out there. You are allowed your opinion. I thought Deadweiler was a lock, and so like, I, it was right. one of those weird things where I, I and then someone's like she didn't get nominated. Even after I looked at nominations, I'm like heck yeah, Andrea Riseborough. And someone's like, yeah, Dead Wilder didn't get nominated. And I was like, what? Because I don't even think I looked at the rest of them. Because you just assumed. Yeah. And like, Kate Blanchett's too good. Michelle Yeoh's going to win. She better. Yeah. And so. I think yeah. Blanchett could have been left off the list. Because she's just, listen, she's so good. And she's so good in Tar. <sighs> yeah. But you know what? Put Viola Davis in there. Why not? I would, I would, no. I would, the one I would drop is, the, the two I would drop are um, Michelle Williams and Kate Blanchett. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Just whatever. But that's it. Hey, you know what? This is what happens when you have a year of really good performances. Yeah. It's, I mean, someone, like, it's mad that no one got, Decision to Leave got no nominations. Blows my mind. That's my favorite movie of 2022. All right. So, perfect. I love it. I love The Woman King. Sorry. To, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> You and I are not good at staying yeah, on topic. Uh, but uh, yeah, does this happen with other guests that you have like all the time, or is it just me? No, you. It's you. I don't know if you ever heard of Adam Hodgins' episode, but we go, <laughs> we go to Mars. Uh, I love and, it. Yeah, and so yeah, I was gonna pick that. So I'll, that makes my life easier because we already got Woman King on there. So uh, I'm gonna take um, Tim Blake Nelson from Old Henry. Okay. So I just uh, record an episode without Norbert and. Tim Blake Nel- uh, and Bryce, and but Tim Blake Nelson, he plays this guy, uh, Old Henry. It's a Western. It's beautifully shot. Two six I'm six take to your one word aspect for it. ratio. Two six Not six to one. It. Not a Western girl. Oh, okay. Um, he's so good, and it, it, like I'll tell you at the end how it plays out because it's okay. it's really unbelievable, and I love the way they shot it. Really well made, but Tim Blake Nelson becomes Tim Blake badass. So I'm gonna take Tim Blake badass in there. Okay, so I think who's, you should. Who's your? Is this your fifth pick? I don't know what pick I'm on because um, I'm all over my list. So uh, let's see. So I did the Sub-Zero and Scorpion. I did Kano. I did the Riddler. I did Amenza. I think I'm like fourth okay, or fifth. Fourth. Okay. And you keep saying, I'm going to go random. I'm going to go random. So now I'm going to go random. The Polka Dot Man from Suicide Squad. Oh, my gosh. He's so, <laughs> he's so silly. His mom. <laughs> I can't. I loved it so much in that movie. I'm like, who are the characters that are just iconic? And if you like, you could bring up the suicides and people are going to think of, you know, obviously they're going to go to Harley Quinn or whatever. But if you say, yeah, but did you remember the polka dot man? People would be like, oh, my God. Yeah, that guy. Oh, um, so good. The whole cat, like rat so catcher. Sweet. I bought the vinyl of that movie. Like I listen to the you? vinyl a lot just to get in the oh vibe of the film. It's so fun. Well, then I don't have to pick Margot Robbie in that movie now. He's so good, though. And he's he excellent, and I, I also had King Shark, because he's another one that was hilarious in that movie. <laughs> so I had a gigantic list, and but yep. I broke it. So these are these are the people I have left on my list, because okay. I have one more pick, I think. Because okay. I have done Princess, Zoe Kravitz, let's see, who else did I do? Uh, uh, oh, Baby Assassins. Yeah, so yes. I have one left. So okay. I, I have Rom from RRR. Okay. I have Chloe Grace Moritz from Shadow in the Cloud. She front kicks. I didn't see that. So I love her, though. She front kicks a gremlin, and it's pretty <laughs> unbelievable. It's amazing. <laughs> and I also have Dylan O'Brien from Love and Monsters, because I think okay. Love and Monsters is one of the most likable movies I've watched in a long time. And I think Interesting. He, he has such a nice screen presence, Dylan O'Brien. Yeah. And then I also have uh, I have Bob Odenkirk from Nobody. I, I have, have that. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet from Dune, Florence Pugh, Black Widow, Kristen Stewart, Underwater, John David Washington, Tenet, Scott Atkins, Day Shift, Now Rue Prey. I have Ryan Gosling from the Grey movie. I think Grey movie is one of the worst things I've ever seen, but Ryan Gosling does some interesting stuff in it. Okay. I have Jake Gyllenhaal from Ambulance. Raging Fire, I have Donnie Yen. I have the entire cast of Paper Tigers because I adore that movie. But I think my last one I'm going to pick... Make it iconic. Make it one that people remember. I'm going to take Lakeith Stanfield from The Harder They Fall. I love him. Now, what I like about him in The Harder They Fall is he's a murderer and he's a cheater. But he's he's he got wa- great eyes. He like wa- he's oh, yeah. very expressive in the eyes. So and he wants to live. Like he has all these newbies coming up to him, and these newbies are like one, two, three, and he just shoots them. Like he's like, 
He's, he's like, he'll shoot you in the back. Like he yeah. doesn't, care. he's going to live. And I like what I like about his character is how tired his character is and how little he wants to play, but how much younger kids want to go up against him by the, the bra like being you know braggadocious and confident, but he's just, <sighs> poof, <laughs> just shoots a guy. <laughs> he's a lot like crystal crazy. Yeah, exactly. It's he, like, Ugh. He's tired of it and he's a murderer and he's, he's, his soul is gone and he isn't about, playing fair because he wants to live and i think he's just a good villain because he has a very clear definition of who he is and he doesn't waver from that and you understand him as a character so that's my fifth pick so i guess i have baby assassins i have the princess the harder they fall old henry and kimmy and batman that's a i'm very happy yeah that's a good list very happy this is a good one i'm happy i'm very happy (laughs) I'm very satisfied, too. Good stuff. Well, this was great. Thank you so much for joining me. I always have a ton of fun talking with you. <laughs> One of these days we'll have to get... Well, I don't even want to talk about it. It still stings thinking about it. I know. A certain episode back up. Well, I'm going to... Yeah. I still have all my notes. I checked. A moment for it. All my notes are still there. You so, know what? One of these days we'll re-record it. Yeah. And with all the Aronofsky love right now, that's going on. I didn't like Ugh. Whale, but I like Fra- Fraser's performance. You know, I don't think I'm going to see it. I There's something about it that gives me the ick. It, there, it, there's very, you know, it's very icky. Uh, Roxanne but... Gay wrote a really good piece on what gives her the ick, and I think that's probably the closest I am to it. Like, this idea of, like, this fat as spectacle kind of thing. I don't know. Like, I've heard other people talk about how it's really um, sort of tormenting to watch somebody destroy themselves who could just change their mind and decide not to. But I think what, what Gay gets at is really interesting like you have uh like like a a, an actor who for most of his career was known as being this fit like athletic you know george of the jungle kind of look and now this is his comeback and like the fat suit kind of thing and just i don't know there's something about the descriptions of it for me that i think i might pass on it i don't know it's kind of a weird feeling for me he finds a lot of humanity in the role, mm-hmm. and I think there's an amount of sadness. I don't. It's icky. I'm just gonna right out front. It's icky, sure. and I don't think it's that good of a movie. I, I think there's a lot of characters that are necessary, but I do think for what he's given, he finds a lot of warmth in yeah. it, and there's a sadness to his. I just I don't I don't know about that world, but there's nothing glorified or there's a sadness to a lot of it, and I. I think he finds that. I can see Fraser doing that. Yeah. And I see Aronofsky pointing the finger. Yeah. I think that makes sense. And I, I think with another actor who can't find that warmth mm. and that compassion, because he seems like a very empathetic man. Oh, my God. He's everybody's favorite. Yeah. And like I, the Internet just loves him. <laughs> the back of my computer. So I've been a huge Brandon Fraser fan for a long time. I'm Airheads. Yeah. I've covered so many of his movies on the oh, podcast. Yeah. And Sino like, Man, all of those. I, I mean, mummy, like with honors. I mean, I have I've... a mummy print up here. Uh, yes. I have a, I support Brendan Fraser Fraser on, on my my uh, computer. But it's mm-hmm. yeah, without his empathy and without his con- just niceness, it, it, it I don't think not I'm, having I'm, seen it, I hmm. can totally I expect that it's very true what you're saying. I think Paul Mezcal should win the award this year because I'm going to be honest. I'm really tired. I'm going to be honest. What am I going to lie? I, I'm really tired <laughs> Not to of me, Mark. like prosthetic acting. I'm tired of, I'm tired of people mimicking another like Elvis. <laughs> I can't. If he um, wins, I'm going to be irate because just... I'm still holding a grudge for Taron Edgerton. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. He was so good in that. I'm still angry, but he did his own singing. He was outstanding. He got nothing. And he wasn't. And now everybody else is getting the attention. And it wasn't mimicry. Like Rami no. Malek wins for mimicry. Yes. And I, I think what Paul Mezcal does in After Sun is create a brand new character mm. who is not based on Elvis. There's no mimicry there. It's a it's a new character. So I just I'm like, you know, what? if there's if people are playing a character, give them another award. Like do. Do a, like a, ten actors, all men and female, original performance, and then do like even like a book adaptation. That's an idea. And then do yeah. ten of you original characters. Original characters, and then you're mimicking Elvis. Like it's yeah. I, no, that's never an worked. interesting idea. It would never work. I'm pulling. I'm pulling for Colin Farrell. Yeah, because I think Banshees of Inisherin was so oh, good. He won 2022. I mean, I think Thirteen Lives is probably the most underappreciated movie of 2022. 
I agree. Ron, Ron Howard came back and just knocked it out the park. The Batman is unbelievable. Yes. After Yang is one of my favorite movies of 2022. He won 2022. I, I think yeah. him. I mean, maybe you could make a case for Jenna Ortega because she was an ex Wednesday and Scream. That's true too. She had a baller. I didn't like Scream though. No. Um, I love I the idea. The original movie. I love the and... idea of fans. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> sort of. I mean, I feel like this is I, this is one that you. I don't know. It it didn't land for me at all. Got it. Uh, it seemed like somebody's weak carbon copy. Well, it happened real fast. Yeah, it just didn't work for me. I gotcha. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, this was awesome. You're always a pleasure to talk to you. And, and thank I you. pick. I think I picked this topic. So I think so. You get the next one. Cool. So I still have Midsummer sitting around. Somar. Oh. I'm not calling it Midsummer. Please don't make me call it. No, Midsommar. it's Midsummer. Yeah. Do people do that? Yeah. Don't oh make me do God. it. And no. we, we got to say it. And then like, listen, I know it's Midsommar, but Midsommar. I'm not. Midsommar. But no. pick whatever. I don't want to force it. You pick whatever you want. <laughs> My God. And, hey, uh, I'm always down for some A24. I mean, um, they do big. Green Knight's blowing up. You should listen to our Green Knight oh, episode because everybody else God. is. God. I love that movie so much. That's my new favorite Christmas movie. It just keeps getting listens. It's like I'm gonna uh, watch Die Hard and then I'm gonna watch The Green Knight. That's my Christmas. Good. That's a good picture right there. Oh. How about Barry? You know Barry was in like 14 foster homes. Barry Keoghan. No kidding. Yeah, he grew up kind of in foster homes and then now he's Oscar nominated. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying that for the you Banshees back. of Inisherin. I guess I'm See? not saying it's back. He's just not like you can still be incredibly successful and be in foster homes. I'm not like doing that, but. It's just nice knowing that he's not like a you know Harvard or you know I'm from Cambridge acting school or I'm from right. not there's anything wrong with that or you know Jack Quaid or the it's son nice of to a, see an underdog win. There it is. There you it know, is. it's it's nice to seeing some new names that yeah. we haven't seen for a there while. You know, like I'd love to pull for him. I'd love to pull for Andrea. Um, neither one of them is going to win, but um, it'd be a nice idea. It'd be a very nice idea. Well, but well, I am. I think those acting categories are pretty much locked. Yeah, it's Michelle. It's uh, Kay Angela. Kwan, Angela Bassett. Yep. And I think Oscar is. I think actor is. I see. I don't know. I wondered because didn't Farrell just win? Uh, what was it? Critics' Choice. Oh, then yeah, he could be up. So I don't know. I feel like actor is the only one that might be a closer call. Listen, Farrell um, was better because that's a new character, and yeah. he's. And then he, and he was so more, cute. And he becomes more interesting. And I usually don't like him, but he was so cuddly in this. I love character actor Farrell. I love that he's like, I'm not doing SWAT crap anymore, even though I like SWAT. Yes. You know what I mean? I like SWAT too. Yeah, he's like, he's just kind of like, listen, <laughs> I'm going full character actor. Yes. I don't care. I'm using my powers for good. He's yeah. like, look, I can do it. Let me do it. Yeah. And now he can. Oh, so yep. Doesn't have to be the pretty boy anymore. I'm thinking, I'm saying Paul's going to win. He won't. Mm -hmm. Massive support nice. from the actor's branch. Have you I seen After Sun? Thrilled. I haven't yet. Wrecked. It's listen. I think in ten years. Okay. When people, I know you got to get out of here. When in ten no, years, I'm fine. when people are talking about which 22, 2022 films are art, I think they're going to be talking about Decision to Leave, and After Sun. The way After Sun uses negative space and cinematography, like there's a scene where they're shooting far away. It's father daughter and like a in kayaks and they're having a private conversation about something. And it's filmed in a way of you're sort of being a voyeur on their conversation. You're listening in on a private conversation. The way it uses, like I said, again, negative space and just the acting and, oh, man, I want a movie. Oh, I'm going to hunt this one down and watch that this week it then. It ripped me apart. And Megan Oof. watched it and now, like, Megan's like, she's like, she's like, this movie wrecked dialogue, like filming dialogue for me. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's a, that and Decision to Leave, I mean, Park Chan Wook is just working on every cylinder in that film. And it's on movie. Okay. But I think those two. All right, we got to get out of here. Well, thank you so right. much. For <laughs> say, uh, where, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Rabbit Hole Podcast. I'm on a couple of those. So you can check us out if you were to check out the website, rabbitholepodcasts.com. And you can hear me quite a bit on the Lambcast because they haven't, you know, told me no yet. So I keep showing up there quite a bit. But, yeah, that that's pretty much it. On Twitter, I am at Foolish Minion. Nope. Yes, Foolish Minion 20, because I wanted to be Foolish Mortal Minion, but I can't go that long. It's too mm -hmm. long of a name. But yeah, my, my podcasting Twitter is at Foolish Minion 20. I'll tag so. that in the post. So if you need to look at it, you're listening thank to the episode, you. you'll just find it right there. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me, Lisa. Thanks for having me. All right, so for me, Mark Hoffmeyer. And, for your and Lisa Leahy. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Leahy. This is Movies on the Flicks. We'll see you next week.